Hi, I'm Rita Wilkins, also known as the Downsizing Designer. So it's Tuesday evening, and I always talk about something downsizing or decluttering. And tonight's topic is one that I hope is of interest to you because in my world, I'm always looking for trends and in doing what I do every day as a designer and as a lifestyle designer, you know, when I hear things over and over again, I'm really listening because I realize that, you know, something is changing in many of our lives. And one of those is decluttering. So wherever I go, people are saying, you know, I really want to declutter. How do I declutter? Where do I get started? I get stuck. How do I get unstuck? All of those things are being asked of me every single day. So what my topic tonight is, is about the new decluttering trend. So a question I have for you is what does the popular um, Marie Kondo Netflix series and the art of Swedish death cleaning and also the COVID pandemic have in common? <clears throat> so when you think about each one of those, each has inspired a decluttering trend or a movement that has caused us to completely rethink excess accumulation, and overconsumption. So it's also inspired us to get rid of things that we no longer want, need, or use. And it's taught us the value of living a simpler life with less. I don't know about you, but COVID certainly did that for me. But then also Marie Kondo um, has been a, a big influence in my life, as it has with many of you. If you've read her book, The Art of um, Tidying Up or The Magic of Tidying Up, and then also Swedish death cleaning, which um, there was a, a woman in Sweden, um, her last name is Magnus, and she's written a book called The Art of Swedish Death Cleaning, which is basically um, cleaning up our things now so that uh, when we die, um, our kids and our families won't have to do it for us. So each one of these has to do with decluttering. So during the pandemic, <clears throat> we were all stuck at home um, and many of us took a good look at the piles of clutter that were everywhere, the amount of stuff that we had accumulated over many of the years, and the, the unopened boxes that had been sitting in our attics or in our basements in our garages for, for years, and we had no idea what was inside of them. So, in other words, our eyes were opened. We saw things that we didn't see um, before or that they were ignored because we were too busy um, to look or even to care. So, but when we were combined, when we were confined to our homes for the first time in a long time, we began to experience firsthand the negative impact of what clutter can do. The stress, the overwhelm, the distraction, and that inability to focus. And that's what we were all looking for during that time. And it was not it was not just our stuff, it was our kids' stuff, our spouse's stuff, our partner's stuff, our family's stuff. Everything seemed to be surrounding us and, and all of it created a lot of chaos and clutter. So given that we now had more time on our hands um, during that period, many of us were inspired to, um, to look at those piles of clutter and to start decluttering, to start paring down all of our stuff to get rid of things that we no longer wanted, needed, or were using. And we were yearning for a more organized uh, space and a more peaceful space. Um, so it has become known as the Great American Cleanout or a Purging Tsunami. So both of those titles, you've probably read them before, but the more you think about it, there is a massive explosion in the amount of decluttering going on in the United States and perhaps worldwide right now. <clears throat> but what Mer many Americans discovered in that process of decluttering was that decluttering is far more than simply cleaning and organizing um, your physical stuff. It's about decluttering your minds too. So when you are free from those unhealthy emotional attachments to things um, that impact our overall health and our well-being, our focus and our productivity and our overall happiness and peace of mind, that's when you start to realize the impact um, that we can have when we live a clutter-free life. 
So the first time, for the first time in, in years, many people discovered that higher quality of life, that time that you suddenly had to sit at the kitchen table with your family, to have real conversations. When you were no longer drowning in stuff and having to manage and organizing all that stuff, um, you now had more time. So the funny thing is our brains naturally crave organization so that when our homes are lighter, our brains are also lighter. And <clears throat> this interest um, and the trend in decluttering is not, it's not going away anytime soon. What is emerging, I think, is a new lifestyle that we want and we desire and we actually deserve. <clears throat> So once you've experienced the benefits of a clutter-free home and a clutter-free lifestyle, you realize you now have more time, energy, and freedom to enjoy those things, enjoy more of what matters most to you. Now, this is the kind of the, the consensus is that one of the biggest long-term effects and impacts of de the decluttering trend and movement is that <clears throat> And that was maybe initially inspired by Marie Kondo in, um, I guess it was like 2015, 16, something like that. Her book called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. That was one inspiration for sure. But then it was further inspired by the COVID pandemic and our, and our being housebound. And then the art of Swedish death cleaning, that whole movement and the minimalist movement. So <clears throat> it, it's that Americans right now are choosing to make decluttering a habit every day so that it becomes part of that daily routine and not letting clutter build up again like it once did. Another thing that I think is an overall <clears throat> um, long-term impact and effect is um, I think there's a desire to avoid overspending, overconsumption, realizing that owning less actually allows you more freedom um, to live more. I know certainly as a baby boomer, many of us have downsized and decluttered and continue to do so, but also not spending as much and not ever getting into that overconsumption period like we once did. And then another long-term effect, I think, is to live a simpler, higher quality of life. And this is, I know to be true, is that the less you have, the more you value what you choose to keep. So I hope that this has helped. Um, decluttering is, is a movement. I think it's here to stay. Um, many of you that I see on tonight, um, I, I talk with regularly and many of you are in that mode of decluttering. So if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out to me at Rita Wilkins at RitaWilkins.com. And just so you know, our, our website and my blog has well over 500 blogs and we have um, tons of videos on YouTube all about decluttering, downsizing, and living the higher quality of life with less. Hope this helps, and we'll talk again soon.